So this is telling us that the cycle has changed from a bear to a bull. We might have a, a one or two Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting your investment journey, Jason Pizzino's discussions provide a comprehensive understanding of market trends, charts, and indicators. His ability to break down complex concepts into digestible insights ensures that you stay ahead of the curve and make well-informed decisions. In this video, he shares his analysis on typical Bitcoin June performance over the years and what to expect in June 2023. So, if you're ready to navigate the exciting world of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks, hit that subscribe button now. Join us on this exhilarating adventure towards financial growth and success. Don't miss out. Subscribe, like, and share today. Dan Tapiero, founder of Growth Equity Funds 10T Holdings and One Roundtable Partners, shared some of his most important strategies to navigate the market. These include having a broader perspective and avoiding the influence of feelings and people's fears, Tapiero explained. It's important to understand that the space has really grown. It's not just about the price of Bitcoin or the price of Ethereum. We have five or six companies that actually made more money last year than in the previous year. So, even during the time of a massive drop in the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum, we've had companies do better. The executive also gave examples of sectors within the broad digital asset ecosystem that, according to Tapiero, are not correlated. He explained that in 2022, $8 trillion in stablecoins were settled, the total number of non-fungible tokens, NFTs, minted crossed the $1 trillion mark, and blockchain gaming took off. Tapiero pointed out that three years ago, these were all zero. We've been looking at where this cycle currently sits and in terms of the timing, it seems like we are pretty much well sitting in the beginning stages of a new bull market. We've got our 360 to 400 days to the downside, which we have now done, and it looks like we are starting that next leg out. Yep, I still understand that many are anticipating further downside, but in terms of the cycle where we currently sit, it just doesn't seem likely. We've got a few other things to get through with that as well. Also looking at the S&P 500, this thing also looks like it wants to push higher. And of course, if there is more strength in traditional markets, then there is some risk appetite and the risk it tends to move over into riskier assets to make bigger gains. That's the way the game works. But more on that later, let's just stick with some of the cycles uh, where we're currently at and continue with the, the data for, for BTC. So in terms of the four-year cycle itself, which is counted from the low to the low, we're not looking at any other reasoning for four-year cycles. Some people measure four-year cycles from the halvening, which of course is roughly a four-year cycle as well. Others measure tops to tops. Others expect the same sort of pattern to play out. None of that. The four-year cycle is about the low to the low to the low. That's what we're looking at. And then how we gauge what happens within that cycle is where does that top come in? Does it come in halfway through the cycle uh, on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side? That tells us whether it is strong or weak. We'll get to that later on. But right now, it seems like the four-year cycle is playing out relatively well. Looking at the previous cycle, June was a peak. And the cycle before that, you had June was in the accumulation zone before we also had another small peak with the second June after the low. But I just want to turn our attention to the uh, monthly returns before we get to the quarterly stuff. In terms of June itself, negative 0.9. So basically a flat month overall when we measure the returns for that month. Now, there are some big moves to the upside and big moves to the downside, but we have to understand in which part of the cycle we're in, which is why I spent so much time just then explaining where we anticipate, where we think we are in the cycle based on our timing aspect. Now, there's a lot of other things that come into it, which I'll mention in a moment. In particular, our GAN swing indicator looking at those swing moves to the upside, which indicate more upside. This is based on over 100 years of data across all markets and typically has a very high uh, chance of playing out. So if you learn how to use a GAN swing indicator, you can find a link to this in the video description and uh, instructions on how to use it on uh, with future videos as well. That is going to help you out a lot 
with understanding how to read the market in terms of the market trend on a macro cycle. Negative 0.9, not much if we average these out. But in terms of the cycle, 2022, obviously the big one, big drawdown, CFI collapsed. We're not in any sort of situation like that right now. I understand that many will still be pointing to every single bearish narrative. However, I just point to the chart and we have seen higher and higher lows. So what the investors are doing, not my opinion, but the facts on the charts are that they are buying up these lows rather than last time they were selling as there was bad news, whereas now they are buying up the lows. So massive one there, but that was a bearish year. 2018, massive bearish year, negative 14%. You saw a lot of uh, negative months through that period as well. And then we had 2014 was also a bearish year. Not much to the upside. You had a previous May, which was a good month, but then a lot more downside as well. Now, I've only got a few months in here, but we just want to focus on May moving forward from this point. 2013 also had a pretty big bearish year. Now, the outliers there, you know, if we take out some of these months here, 2019 was pretty big, but we've seen quite a few big months already through January uh, and into March as well. So that's potentially balancing out where we currently sit in the market. So May is somewhere looking like we're going to get about a negative four, negative 5% if the market doesn't move too much from today over the next two days until we close out May. So we don't have a figure there yet, but moving forward in for June, basically not much is going on there. Um, so yeah, if we just look at those uh, bearish years and the years that come after the bearish year, which is what we're potentially in now, we've got a point, uh, sorry, 26.6% return for 2019. And for 2015, there was a 15% return. And for 2016, 27% return. So some pretty good, uh, June has been a pretty good month for the market after a low has come in, even though the average has been negative 0.9. July also been a pretty good month there. The average is 9% and using those years after uh, the low has come in. So 2018 and basically around that 2014 and January of 2015. Well, we can see July positive month, 2019 negative month. But remember, it did have a massive, massive pump for six months at that period. So we've gone on a pump right now in 2023. Maybe we are due for a little bit of a slowdown, whether it's a smaller move to the upside, like some of these 10% or 2%, or maybe a slight move to the downside, you know, 6 or, or 3%. Basically, we're in a flat territory here. We've got a couple of data points here and what we can see from the market after it has had a reasonable move. In one case, yeah, we did have a little bit of a move, a quick drop to the downside and then a breakout. And in this case, we had a very big move and then a pull back, just buying time, waiting to accumulate more before that final pump. It seems like we could potentially get more of the same. So we've had an intermediate move compared to these other two, 300% here, and that was approximately 100%. Now we've seen that 100% move here. So potentially we just grind sideways, testing some of those higher and lower prices to see where that supply and demand comes in. We still have overhead resistance at around 31,000. We still have underside support at 25,000. So if we potentially get more of the same, then we can expect that move of around $6,000 between that 25 and 31, which also lines up relatively well with the market not doing too much for June when we get an average of the percentage of the moves. You can see right here, negative 0.9. Now that's at the end of the month. Within the month, there can of course be moves 10, 20, 30% to the upside, 10, 20, 30% move to the downside. But when that month finally closes out, just the average has shown that it was negative 0.9, basically not much going on there. So in that case, it can start to lead us to our first conclusion for June. And that means, drum roll please, and it's not going to be very exciting, is that maybe we just see more of the same when the month finally closes out. Maybe we see a test to the upside, a test to the downside, and the month sort of trends sideways. That's exactly what the first stage of the bull market should look like to continue to have support in the market. Looking at the GAN swing indicator that you can find in the video description as well, the swings here, this helps us identify the trend of the market and when these swings are broken to the upside, typically you do not see them go back down in a macro view, okay? So it depends on the time frame you're looking at, which is why we use it for all of our short-term and long-term trading. So this is just showing further clarification of the trend. If we have higher highs and higher lows, then we are in a bull market. If we have the opposite, 
lower highs, lower lows, then we're in a bear market. Note this low here, this didn't happen on most exchanges, so just uh, keep that in mind. And we're also at the bottom of a market, which is where there is more confusion than if we are just in a raging bull or bear market, basically nice clear trends. You can see the downside, very clear trends. You can see it again at the beginning, we had a fake out to the downside, a break, a high close, and then the market resumes a trend to the upside. Same sort of thing happened to the downside, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, then we had the break. So this is telling us that the cycle has changed from a bear to a bull. We might have a, a one or two breaks to the downside, the fake outs, but watch where that close come in, comes in, which is exactly what we were talking about earlier here. And of course, with the uh, overall returns for June itself. The other thing to note is the timeframes of the move to the upside. You can see in this, in basically all the cases, once the move begins, whether it's the downside or the upside, you'll get more months in this case, you know, more periods moving to the upside than to the downside. If you're in a bear market, you're going to get more periods to the downside than to the upside because the momentum is bearish in that case. In this case, the momentum is bullish. You've got two to the up, one to the down, three to the up, one to the down, 10 to the up, two to the down, and so on. So basically you just go through and you can count these using that swing indicator. So that's telling you as well that the market has now flipped. Look at what we've just seen, three months up, one down. Uh, we've got one month up here, one down as well. Maybe we trend sideways. Maybe we just give a little push to the uh, tops just to take those out and fake it all out again. So this is also swinging us to that bullish scenario. So going back to what we're talking about in that uh, just previously, what to do with the information, we're looking at this being a bull. So any of those opportunities we get to the downside, we take. Hit that like button to show your support and let us know you appreciate the quality information we provide. And don't forget to share our videos with your friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. Together, we can empower one another and create a vibrant community of like-minded individuals.